It's a physical response. As you know, Mother Nature uses all kinds of mathematical languages. That when we go to understand physical phenomena, we generally find that there's some sort of mathematical underpinning to whatever the phenomena is. You know, like the Fibonacci sequence? That's like that series you find in nature? Like the face of a sunflower? Where are the spirals? You see this math everywhere. How did we end up in a universe like that? Why should the world behave according to mathematical laws? And it turns out, in fact, all of our senses appear to rely on sort of Fourier transforms, that they all seem to use the same mathematics. So again, here's evidence that the brain uses the same mathematics to decipher the sensory world as are involved in the making of a hologram, mm -hmm. which is, as I say, not proof, but compelling evidence that something is going on there. It is not only that it becomes easier to describe with mathematics. As you go deeper and deeper into reality, mathematics becomes the only way to describe reality. Okay, so one, one, two, three, five, that's the beginning of the Fibonacci sequence. Next number in the sequence, what do you think? How about eight? The number after that, 13. The number after that, 21. So if you're getting those right along with me, then you've recognized the pattern that I wrote with the first few numbers in the Fibonacci sequence, which is this. It starts with a one, the next number is a one, then after that, to get the next number, you'll always add the two numbers that came before that. So one and one is two, one and two is three, two and three is five, three and five is eight, so on and so forth. So that's, the, that's recognizing the pattern that exists in the Fibonacci sequence. So it turns out that this sequence of numbers has all kinds of applications. It describes all kinds of things in the world that we see around us. There's a conspiracy to hide this information that DNA is a Fibonacci, is an exemplification of this number or entity uh, ratio sequence called the uh, golden ratio, the ratio that proves the existence of intelligent design or the uh, reality of intelligent design of the cosmos. I mean, if you go to the golden ratio site for Wikipedia 2 on the same theme, um, <laughs> They don't mention any of this stuff in nature that we're going to talk about here, that we talked about on the show two days ago, and that we're talking about here. They talk about how it's found in architecture and math and all this kind of stuff. They don't discuss it, how it's found in the measurements of the human arm. Why not? It's just, it's, it, I mean, well, I think I'm making, that's the point here. I think that just made sense to me, thinking this through as I say it to you. It has to be a conspiracy. How could all this be overlooked, and how could Wikipedia leave it out? It's, it can't be, it has to be somehow that big money has pushed their influence uh, somehow and they've had a drive to keep this covered up or something. It, these can't all be coincidences. And since they're doing that with everything else, it has to be the case that uh, there's some movement to keep this stifled. I mean, why isn't, in, here's another piece to add to this. Why isn't this in our education system? We learn all this junk geometry pea brain stuff when you take geometry in high school and they don't teach you about any of this the golden ratio everywhere in nature I, I went through elementary school you know high school college uh, uh, you know, undergrad degree in college uh, master's degree and halfway through PhD and never was this, any of this mentioned it, and we know who controls the universities uh, the big money behind it, all the way up to the Illuminati Nephilim uh, controllers. So this can't be, this is planned, okay?
mean, this is pretty powerful stuff that we're going over. I mean, there's no anthropologist or biologist on the planet who can explain this one. How how the sunflower evolved a bunch of spirals in it. It's a, it's seed pod design, and how those spirals exactly lead to a golden ratio Fibonacci series numbers. Unbelievable. Okay, this is it. There's no question. I mean, we've all been lied to all through our undergraduate college degrees and our elementary schools and on our TVs just by them not discussing all this. I mean, you know how many examples I have here? There's so many, and they're all this powerful. Okay? And all this was hidden from us while we were in our schools learning about... What were we learning about? Um, plate tectonics theory. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty sad, pretty sad case. And when it's so obviously everywhere in nature, it has to be a conspiracy in the uh, satanic New World Order Illuminati system we live in. They don't want, I guess they don't want you to know this stuff because you might realize that this reality you live in is charged with the, with the, uh, with, with Yahweh, the architects fingerprint is absolutely everywhere and it's in you 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 are a piece of that fingerprint and hey you might realize that your consciousness is also and that there's no joke in saying you're created in god's image and you can therefore take part in the power and creation of the intelligent designer The placebo effect is the extraordinary phenomena of people getting better even when they've only had a dummy treatment or a sham treatment. So that can mean uh, a sugar pill, but it can also mean sham ultrasound, where somebody just holds the machine up to your body but doesn't really switch it on. Or even a, a fake uh, operation, where somebody makes the incision and then pretends to do the operation but doesn't actually do anything. And the fascinating and amazing thing is, it turns out that when people get these fake sham treatments, they often get better. What's interesting about the placebo effect is it shows the amazing power of the mind over the body. When it comes to the origin of life, there are only two possibilities, creation or spontaneous generation. There is no third way. Spontaneous generation was disproved 100 years ago, but that leads us to only one other conclusion, that of supernatural creation. We cannot accept that on philosophical grounds, therefore we choose to believe the impossible, that life, life arose spontaneously by chance." End quote. See what he's, what he's saying there is that science has to be conducted in a naturalistic vacuum. On philosophical grounds, we can't follow the evidence wherever it leads if it leads us outside the natural realm, to a metaphysical realm, to a supernatural realm. We have to stay within this naturalistic, materialistic box. This in 1954, and the idea here is that science will ultimately answer all of these questions, but the last thing that we want to do is jump into some kind of philosophical or theological explanation. It's interesting that 30 years later, in 1984, the late George Wald again gave us another quote. This was called Life and Mind in the Universe, and he actually was speaking at the Quantum Biology Symposium. And here's what he said 30 years after the quote I just read you. It has occurred to me lately, I must confess, with some shock at first to my scientific sensibilities, that both questions, meaning the origin of consciousness in humans and of life from non-living matter, might be brought into some degree of congruence. This is with the assumption that mind, rather than emerging as a late outgrowth in the evolution of life, has existed always as the matrix, the source and condition of physical reality. The stuff of which physical reality is composed is mind stuff. It is mind that has composed a physical universe that breeds life and so eventually evolves creatures that know and create science, art, and technology-making animals. In them, the universe begins to know itself. This again was 1984 by the late George Wald, an agnostic and materialist naturalist. But do you see where he's going there? He brings in a notion of mind. He says, as I studied these 30, these 30 years, these three decades since his previous statement, 
How does matter become mind? It doesn't. Mind must bring forth matter. You see, matter has never brought forth consciousness or rationality or mind. Information. See, now we know what the, the simple cell, so-called, or DNA, that this is information code. Information theory would say that this type of code, this type of ordered sequence, this type of information can only be a product of mind, of intelligence. There is no other alternative. So what is George Wald saying here, even though it shocks his scientific sensibilities? It's that in all areas of study, mind must bring forth information, matter, etc. Matter never brings forth mind. Think about that. The evidence to me that just cries out that there's a God is the study of DNA. DNA is a very powerful, massive information storage system. In fact, DNA that makes up our genes actually is like books of information that's read by a language system. It's absolutely phenomenal. And scientists know today that language as a code only come from an intelligence and information only comes from information. Nobody's ever seen matter by itself give rise to a code. Nobody's ever seen matter by itself give rise to information. And as you look at DNA, it actually cries out. In the beginning, God created the universe. We all begin as a single cell the size of a period at the end of a sentence. How does that cell know how to build a, a body with 100 trillion uh, cells in it, thousands of different kinds, and each one of them is so complex, nanochemical machinery beyond our comprehension how it works, and encoded is the, the instruction manual. It's the manufacturer's manual how to build and operate every part of this incredible body made up of 100 trillion 